The Reading Brain. As Marion Wolfe coined in her book, Proust and the Squid, the story and science of the reading brain, humans were never born to read. There was no genetic disposition or specific brain region designed to tackle the act of reading. Actually, our brain's miraculous ability to make sense of the written word is a testimony to the brain's plasticity. Its billions of neurons and vast neural networks and various brain structures combined and synchronized in such a way that one may be able to obtain reading fluency. These underlying structures that are recruited for reading were actually developed for various tasks such as vision, language and speaking, memory and cognition. These areas combine their efforts in such a way to make reading possible. Once the basic ability to decode words from their smaller combined syllables and letters, the brain's neural circuitry to comprehend writing grows in competence. As earlier brain structures for decoding become more efficient, they do also become more condensed, requiring less cortical space. But slowly the expert reader emerges as these simpler operations become more automatic and less demanding on the brain's varying structures or streamlined for reading. One discussion Marion Wolfe was part of is the topic of reading on the internet. She fears, like many educators, that the internet is giving birth to a generation of readers who do not have the capacity to deeply immerse themselves in deep reading. This type of reading that we should be doing includes reading complex syntax, increasing exposure to vocabulary and content area, exposure to complex material and topics written at length, which all aid in building robust reading and thinking skills. All of this requiring us to critically think, analyze, infer, and understand varying meanings of words, syntax, and the ability to follow a cohesive argument plus supporting details. The fear is not only that reading ability has been compromised by all the skimming, scanning, and lack of focused attention due to digital media, but also the complexity of the reading online requires no deep thought or reading strategy. Most material online only superficially scratches the surface of any topic, and material is often found on search engines based on number of hits rather than based on valid source of information. In other words, powerful cited sources. What are your thoughts?